we're depleted, right? We still are down. Let's reiterate who we're still down. We're still down with Julius. We're mm-hmm. still down Julius, even though there's some optimism as far as Julius is concerned because we've seen him. Mm-hmm. We've seen that video of him doing little, little, you know, little drills. With like she was yeah, doing like suicide and like, yeah, 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 little light drills. We've seen Mitch on the bench yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Julius and Mitch is on a bench. O- OG, OG Juan, OG Ananobi, they say is on schedule to come back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Now, how Julius will react when he comes back is yet to see. Like me in the thread the other day, Q was like, yo, this is that's not his shooting arm, right? Because he's a lefty, he hurt his right shoulder, right? That's not his shooting arm. So that's a good thing. I said, absolutely, that's a good thing. But as you know, when you're a lefty, you're dribbling with your left. And the way Julius likes to play, he likes to play bully ball. Mm-hmm. When he's posting up, he has that right shoulder bumping into dudes. Q, you can speak to this a little bit better than me. You've had this shoulder injury. But do you think that the, the physical bumping and and, and 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 physical, you know, like getting beat up is going to you know, inhibit him when he comes back? Or do you think that he'll be able to tough it out to the end of the season, maybe get that surgery and come back next year even stronger? What do you think? I think he'll definitely be able to, to tough it out, man. These guys have, you know, the top-notch trainers, man. Like, in whatever he's doing right now, he's definitely – if he's on schedule, that means everything he's doing is good and it's working. And it also gives me hope and optimism that it wasn't as bad as we all thought it was going to be. Because anybody here about anything dislocating anything, mm, that, it, it shit is just sounds crazy, right? Oh, like, damn, bro. Like, that means one bone came out of a socket <laughs> – and yeah. then had to go back in, bro. That shit is scary, you know, because right, you wow. break down your cartilage. But you know, I think the way I think he might change up how he's doing it. I think he might. It'll be interesting to see if he starts incorporating his spin move a little bit more when he when yeah. he starts. Oh, back. the Julius Randall spin cycle yeah, shit. You know, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that'll be interesting to see. But I, but he will feel it because it's gonna, you know, when you start back, you know, these dudes, they muscle dudes, you know, it's like it's like it's like you, you pressing your arm against your shoulder and you kind of mm-hmm. ram in the door. Eventually your shit's gonna get sore. And mm-hmm. it's also gonna be sore in the very beginning anyway, because now he's not used to all this physicality. Cause when you're in therapy and you're practicing, you ain't you ain't pushing it to 120%. You just you just giving it whatever you think you could give it because you're in that moment. But when you're in that moment moment during the game, that's when we're really gonna see all right. What what can he really do? How long is it really gonna take him to to knock the dust off? And does he have trust and and his his left arm? We already know he really can't even dribble that way. So is he is he gonna just strictly stay right? Like now we're gonna have to see how teams are gonna play him. Like oh, yeah. They might even start doubling him when you know what I mean. Whenever he gets down there in the low post, and you know because they're gonna know you know what I mean. Like the teams ain't stupid. You know, oh, yeah. hey, before I go to you because I want to ask you this: the Knicks. What I've noticed about the Knicks is that. You know, before these guys went down, they were competing against um, the elite teams. You know, oh, they yeah. might have not won all the games against the elite teams, you know, with Boston and stuff, but they were competing. Now, since the all since we've come back from the All-Star break, we've played the Rockets, beat them by two points. That was that crazy – no, excuse me. They, beat, beat, us. By, mm-hmm. they beat us by two points. That was that bullshit phantom Jalen Brunson call shit, right? Um, oh, cool. Got smacked by the Magic. By mm-hmm. 18, right? Mm-hmm. A good team, right? We're going to agree Magic is a good team in the East, right? Yeah. Beat the depleted 76s, right? So mm-hmm. without Joel Embiid. So like I said, we're beating up on bad teams and um, and not, you know, playing well against the good teams. Then we played the Celtics, got smacked, basically. Then we turned around and played Detroit, right, where we got that call back. You know, mm-hmm. Monty Williams over there crying and shit. We got the call back from Houston. The league <laughs> owed us that. So stop yeah. fucking crying, man. You know what I'm saying? That's You know what I mean? No crying in basketball. <laughs> um, and then yesterday we played the Pelicans, right? And we got, you know, we got smacked by the Pelicans. But yo, listen, the Pelicans are hot right now. Mm-hmm. The Pelicans are playing good basketball right now. They started the season a little shaky. Brandon Ingram in and out the fucking game with that ankle. He tweaked that ankle again yesterday. He had 24. Zion, I want to get into Zion after this. Zion had 21. Trey Murphy, 26. You know, they, they, they was playing good ball. We were depleted. We just couldn't deal with them. We had no real go to get a bucket down the stretch and make some stops, which is confusing because that's what these Tom Thibodeau teams are based on. Ed, how long do you think we can stay afloat playing ball like this where we're only able to beat up and barely beat up? Because we only beat Detroit by, I think, like two points? Yep, two points. Two points. How long do you think we can stay afloat beating these bad teams barely and then losing to these good teams before we start to lose position in the East? What's your opinion on that? 
Man, I'm going to be honest, it's hype. You know, we, I was on the hype train when it came to the Knicks, but it's looking very bad because, look, last night we lost Hartenstein again. I mean, not last night, but he he didn't check in the game last night because of his Achilles. He's mm -hmm. been in and out, in and out the lineup since his Achilles disease. Mm -hmm. And now you got Jalen Brunson going through these cervical spasms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And his ankle, it's so much going on. I mean, it's like you said, we barely beat. Uh, uh, the Pistons, and we, were, we was going to lose that game. They were up by one. We got yeah. lucky because of that no call. You know, I just got to be nice. honest. That was a that was a no call. You know, but I'll take it. That's that's like it. You said that's our, our, our call back from the Houston game. Right, no but, doubt. You know, with with Randall being now, you know, him going through his hit rehab, and his goal is to come back this season. OG coming back in two three weeks, and and Mitch, you know, he has he's hitting his checks, but you know, he's been dealing with the foot injury for what for um, his entire career. I don't know how long the Knicks could hold up and still be a top tier team right now. Like, you know, uh, at the end of January, yo, we was we all jumped out the window. The whole New York City jumped yeah. out the window. But yeah. right now it's difficult. Like, all right, since the All-Star break, we two and two. Now mm -hmm. we play the last game of February, tomorrow, Thursday, we play mm -hmm. the Warriors. The Warriors, their streaky team, they just got back Chris Paul. They mm -hmm. could come out and, and, and spank us. And then, yeah. you know, opening up March, we, we play the hot, we play the Cavs, we play the Hawks, the Magic, the Sixers twice. You know yeah. what I mean? That's a tough stretch for us the next couple of games. And yeah. to be honest, I'm, I maybe give the Knicks maybe two games out of the next, what, six, seven games I just mentioned. I could give them like two, two, two W's right there. It's going to be hard to watch because I don't know why, well, what we did to the basketball gods, but they're really hating us right now, man. The last 10, we three and seven. You know, we just came off a high where we was 14 and 2 in the month of January. Now, with all these injuries piling up and it's getting worse, man, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. We, we we still can hang on, but I feel like they could probably fall to a play-in team. But if we stay in the top five and we don't make a play-in team and everybody comes in healthy, we're going to be a tough team. We're going to be a tough team to beat. It's going to be a tough out. But – Let's see how these injuries, man. How, how we gonna how we gonna manage these injuries, man? This is very scary right now. Scary hours right now for the Knicks. And scary, scary hours, hours in, a, in a good way. Not Great way to good. put it. Great mm -hmm. way to put it.